Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I meet a artist that actually lives here in Madison. Uh, it's somebody that I've been following on Instagram, and they've started doing outside artwork, doing uh, chalk drawings and uh, performance pieces of live art. I don't know why all of a sudden I paused on the word art. I know what I'm talking about here. This whole show is about art. Anyway, and uh, we get together to talk about their painting. They, uh, one of the uh, interesting ways that they've been selling their paintings online, which is something that I've actually been suggesting for a very long time. And it's really nice to uh, kind of hear from somebody uh, how it turned out for them. So they've been selling uh, online for a while. They've been uh, just started an Etsy store and they're talking about how they're promoting that and trying to build up their online following and online sales for the artwork that they make. So uh, we talk about all that in this conversation. It was a lot of fun. And here it is starting right now. My name is Melanie Sartori. I am a painter and a performance artist. Now, I saw that you had uh, on your schedule or events that you've done, you said uh, during the art walk, which first of all, you live in uh, in Madison or in Middleton? Um, I just moved downtown. Oh, you did? Ago, so I live like right by the terrace, the Monona Terrace. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. We're neighbors. Uh, and <laughs> and uh, now I saw in one of the, the art walks that you did, uh, it said that you were going to be there doing performance art. And I was like, I didn't know you did performance art. So first of all, what do you do performance art wise? Tell me about that. So I do chalk art. Um, I just draw the, on the street, essentially, or the sidewalk or wherever it is I'm doing that. Um, this year I used a chalk paint. So I was using like actual big brushes and paints and before that, I used like pastels, um, but yeah. Pastels, like pastel chalk skin. or pastel paint or what What kind of pastels were you using originally? Um, so like soft pastels and then like sidewalk chalk, like just regular chalk. Okay. Um, and then also like they make like spray paint chalk, which is like not it there's it's hard to use, basically. Um, OK, <laughs> so I've, I've experimented with that, but stopped. Um, but now I really like using chalk paint, which is essentially just like ground up chalk that you mix with water and then oh. it washes away and it has good pigments. So, OK, that's my favorite. I only just recently, like as in a few years ago, discovered the whole liquid chalk thing. And I was like, this is, this is brilliant. I mean, I don't use it for anything. Yeah. I've used it a couple of times, but when I use it, I'm like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's way easier to use because like, you're not like on the hot street, like burning your hands. Like you are, if you're using chalk, like for a long period of time, it's like, it's really hard on your body. But yeah. If you're using the the paint it's not as bad okay so. i never even thought about the whole like hot pavement thing yeah that's, that's yeah. true that's actually there's a hazard to it oh wow yeah okay yeah. so <laughs> what what prompted this uh like what started the whole thing about doing this uh chalk art on the on the streets um well i've always painted um and i've always liked to do art but uh during covid i i was like i was a cashier at the co-op and i um like a lot of people at that time just wanted to like not work with the public. So I, I quit that job and then I had like nothing to do but sell art and make art. And I wanted to do something like outside mm -hmm. that we could kind of, I could still like communicate with the community and talk to people, but like from afar. So I yeah. just started like drawing on the sidewalks um, in downtown Middleton. Cause that's where I lived at the time. Okay. And so. what sort of stuff were you doing when you made these? Um, I would do like, like knockoff Banksy stuff. And then I'd also oh. do like Banksy. I thought you said bank scene and I'm like, you're drawing yeah. like tellers and lines. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Knock off like Banksy quotes and like his, like the girl with the balloon stuff. And then I would do like, um, just large flowers, basically large botanical things or like patterns. Okay. All right. Now, how did you get started uh, as far as creating art or uh, like when did you find your style? When did you start actually going more forward with creating things artistically? Um, well, so I always like painted and drew things growing up, but I think maybe 
like I got really into it probably five or six years ago. And then I just kind of started um, painting a lot and I would paint something and I'd feel out if I vibed with it. And then if I didn't, I would like paint over it. And I went through this period of like, just a lot of painting. And then after okay. that, I moved to Madison and I felt like I had a lot of like styles that I knew I liked to work with and I guess subject matter that I knew I liked. Okay. Now I know on your website or on your uh, Etsy page and on your Instagram page, you say that you are self-taught and you just said that you started painting. So you just decided to pick up paints one day and you didn't really have any background in it? No. Well, like when I was little, I, I always painted. Like, okay. From time I was like five in school that was like a huge thing I did um I was really quiet when I was a kid okay. so I, I did not talk a lot but I drew all the time and so I think I was doing it partially to like communicate with my classmates and like they really liked what I did I would so I kind of would do it as like a performance like I always do it all in class and people were into that um but uh as far as like trying to learn techniques on my own. I've done that since high school. So I've like kind of studied art, looked up YouTube videos, mm -hmm. um, experimented with different materials, probably since I was like 17, 16, 17. Okay. Um, but I feel like I'm still always like finding new things and weighing out what people like. Okay. So, yeah. Like continuous experimentation is still kind of the way I always make stuff, but yeah. What, what would you say when you're saying, uh, find out what people like, and I get that is because you're trying out the things you want, but you're also trying to go, I'd like to live this way. So what are people gravitating towards? What, what, what have yeah. you been finding people are, what have you done where you're like, Oh, people like this. And why do you think like, what are some um, of the examples of things that you think they like? Well, Okay mountains like I, really? I love painting mountains. yes and I, I paint mountains in like all different styles but that's like I I made these ones that were like specifically a plaster background so it was like white texture neutral geometric tones and then golds so like colors that work well in any house like stuff like that like I would list it and it would just be like gone like huh so those sell really well neutrals the plaster look I think people like it because like they want that vibe in their house, but they don't want to like actually plaster an entire wall. They want just like a big chunk of it on their wall. <laughs> so right, huh. that's yeah. But and plaster is fun to work with. It's just kind of messy. Um, but yeah, how do you work yeah. with the plaster? Explain that to me. I, I, I'm actually not really under. I, I get what you're saying about it, but I'm like, well, how does that work? How are you making what? It, what is the working with plaster thing with that plaster, you're talking about? I use. Um, the same kind of plaster that you like use to repair a wall, basically. So you just okay. uh, mix the powder with water and then you can mix that with acrylic paint with binders. Um, you can change the, the way that it operates, I guess, by doing that. Like you mix this um, with the paint you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. so it gives it this really thick texture. And then I use like a, like a grout shovel, like that you use to put grout into bathroom tile. Okay. And then I, because that way I can do it on a large scale and then give it like these big single like strokes, like this larger feel to it, I guess. Oh. Um, and then, yeah, so that will give it like this nice matte white background if I want to paint over that or add like, you know, use that as a sky and then I'll paint little mountains under that or like, yeah. Okay. But the standout will be just that texture. People like that. I don't know. What made you think of using this technique? Um, I don't know. I think it's because when I was a kid, we always had it at my house because my parents were painters. Okay. Um, and I, I probably at some point like used it and just kind of learned that you could do that oh. with a painting. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I've only done that for like a couple of years. Um, other things that, people consistently like or like just scenes landscapes flowers okay um so. and when you're thinking of these scenes like what particular idea do you have starting out when you're doing them like you know it's one thing to test them out but also it's like well i gotta paint a scene what do you decide to paint when you mm -hmm. do them so it depends like sometimes 
like recently I'm working with gouache and I'm doing specific scenes of like Madison or cities um, or like just countryside scenes. Okay. Um, so for those, I'll be mapping it out and then making it, you know, I'll get at least the, the depth of the scene down. And then from there I can experiment with whatever colors, whatever I'm, I'm using. Um, but if I'm doing like, there's like a different style that I work with that's kind of more fully imaginative. That's more like, um, I like to use oil paint and I'll just, I'll have an idea like I want to just paint some kind of landscape with a pink sky. So I'll paint that. And then as I'm painting, um, I'll just kind of decide what I want to do after I have that down. Like I'll be looking at the paint. Sometimes the paint is like, oh, I think this looks kind of like mountains and I'm going to make it into that or trees or um, whatever it just, whatever it seems to work with, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and then that way, if I do that, then I get a lot more like spontaneous ideas that I like to just kind of go with and I can, things just get more interesting that way. Yeah. Yeah. And how would you describe your work? Uh, I, you've mentioned a lot of different mediums and, or I mean, you know, different types of paints and different types of things that you do paint and, you know, painting, also doing the sidewalk stuff. So how would you describe yourself artistically or what would you say to people when you say, oh, I'm an artist and how would you explain the work? Um, not to be too wordy, but I usually say <laughs> that I'm multidisciplinary, which like, uh, that just means I use a lot of different things. And, okay. I actually um, did not know that. I like that. I'm going to use that. <laughs> yeah. Multidisciplinary. Yeah. It's okay. A word. Um, I say, I guess that my stuff is very imaginative. So like the process of it is really important to me, the, the ability to do things in like a free and spontaneous kind of way. So I, I say like that my stuff is, has an imaginative process, I guess. Um, and I work in abstracts. I do some surrealism, yeah. um, some botanical stuff. So yeah. Okay. And what would you say some of your influences are? I'm actually kind of curious to know who you're going like, no, I, these are the people that I really, really like. Um, I'm always adding more, but I really like Frida Kahlo. Okay. Um, for largely because of just like who she was, like all of her stuff was very influenced by her ideas and, um, it was very personal and she, like, she was just kind of like one with her art. And I, I find, I just think she's really interesting. Okay. Uh, I like Monet. I like Van Gogh. Um, I like Dali. I paint a lot of like his icons, like his elephants. Oh, okay. Um, I only like just recently learned about the elephants when I went to a museum show. I actually, it's one of those things where as I've never really followed him, I knew of him. But mm -hmm. then when I went there, I was like, oh yeah, I had no idea about this elephant thing. <laughs> was, yeah. Yeah, you think of the clocks. Everyone knows the clocks. Right. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, because, you know, yeah. posters in dorms, you know, that's that's what you had. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Um, but Dolly, who, I don't know who else. Uh, yeah. Well, it's a good set. And I will say that I can see that influenced in your work. And that's why I was curious, because I was like, what well, with these different things that you're doing? I, I was like, what person mm -hmm. kind of makes you seek that direction and a lot of those i can see that and uh i also like do you know hieronymus bosch i know the name the uh name. i can't off the top of my head think of who that is now is that the person who did the the levels of hell yeah like yeah the okay. Garden of okay. stuff is just he was like the first surrealist like before surrealism existed in like the year 1500 and no one knows like anything about this guy um but his art's crazy yeah. Really yeah. And, and like I, like I just said, I think that's probably the only thing I know by the person, much like with the Dolly thing. It's like, I think I know the thing that most people know. <laughs> so I've never really done a deep dive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, I don't have an impressive background on it, but I'm aware of the, of the, the Cliff's notes. <laughs> when, Dolly now, needs. yeah. And when you're starting one of these projects, now you've explained the different ways you go about it. How would you say, um, uh, you start a project. What's your process? Uh, do you start it with sketches? Do you just start working on a canvas? How do you choose the size? Like what are some of the things involved when you start a project? So I would say I usually try to like, 
like if I'm making work for a show and I want a series, then I'll know like I have to um, find out, you know, consistent sizes, consistent medium, mm -hmm. like create a, a series of work. Um, so sometimes that's my process. Um, I also like, like right now, um, I'm painting over, I painted over like an old painting that like right. wasn't selling and I didn't really like it. Um, I like to do that sometimes. Like, I don't like to destroy my art, but <laughs> I like to paint over things sometimes because it will give me like this framework that I like would not have had otherwise. Like it'll, like there'll be a painting that has all these, like this texture. And so I'll paint over that and then turn it on its side. And then that will give me an idea for something new that I wouldn't have had. So like, I essentially, I painted like this, the scene from Italy, um, uh, from Venice, that's like a courtyard and I did it really quickly and I didn't like it. So I turned that into water lilies. So, oh. but I never would have thought of that if I had like turned it on its side and then been like, Oh, I guess I want to paint water lilies now. Like, I like that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Nice. And how, yeah. usually how big do you work? Like if you're working with a canvas, what's your normal sort of size ratio for your paintings? My favorite is like, uh, like 26 by like 30 or 24 by 30 and up. I like to do ones that are like two feet by three feet um, or three by four. Okay. So that's my favorite. It's the large canvas. Um, if I'm doing like, uh, like right now I'm learning gouache, mm -hmm. gouache and watercolor, you can't really do that large. Um, but so if I'm like limited by my materials, then I do small, but I like to do large painting. Okay. Do you have a studio that you work in or do you work out of your home? Um, I have a little studio in my apartment. Okay. Um, uh, my apartment is very old and so it has all these little like rooms that are little offshoots and so i just took right. one of those that was it was a closet but now it's or it's was it like that's closet. the thing too it's like it's a very inconvenient closet <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i know it's got exactly a lot what of mean. storage though oh it's, that's good yeah and, and that yeah. was why i asked because with those sizes it's like where do you put it all or do you just sell it that yeah. quickly i try to sell it quickly um nice I, actually, I just started selling prints like on my Etsy, like I just made an Etsy like two weeks ago. I and was going to so, ask you if those were prints or not. Okay. Yeah, those are all prints. My originals, I like, especially the ones I made during COVID and years ago, I just like got out the door like as fast as I could, like didn't care about if I was charging what it was worth. I just like wanted to sell things. Um, okay. But yeah, I try to like have a show going on, have my stuff up at like a cafe, like whenever I can. So yeah, I don't really store anything. I sh I wish I had the the space to do it, but yeah. So speaking of that, then how do you promote yourself and get the word out there that like things are for sale? Uh, when you were saying you were getting the paintings out the door, like how were you contacting people or letting people know that they were for sale or even finding buyers? So, like when I first started trying, like I did little shows in Madison. I've been doing that for like five years. Um, but during COVID, I started using Facebook Marketplace and running ads. Nice. And that, like, it does get your stuff out there, but you aren't, you know, selling to buyers that are there for art. Whereas on Etsy, you're selling to people that want art specifically. And so okay. Marketplace is a great place to, like, get your stuff out there and um, get commissions and, you know, join groups and like if you join certain groups, you post it to these groups, you're suddenly posting an ad to like 500,000 people like that are in your city. Mm -hmm. And so it's a great way to share your stuff. Um, but you just can't always charge what, you know, you can at a gallery or a show. Right. Or on Etsy. It's still people so, that weren't out there to buy art. So they, the value is like, you want how much, you know, Yeah. but they yeah. are willing. I, and this is funny because I've, I've literally been trying to find people or, uh, you know, even recommend people to sell their stuff on marketplace. It's really easy. It's free. It's like a built in market and a yeah. lot of it's local and you find lots of interesting people. And I'm, I'm so happy mm -hmm. to find someone who actually uses it and actually you've been yeah. doing good at it. Um, yeah, I yeah. mean, now I'm, I'm moving more towards Etsy. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be like 
Well, and I get that too, especially with the prints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's ultimately, I think, like a good route for artists to go. But Marketplace also, like, people will message you and they'll say, hey, I have this hallway. What sh- Can you paint something? And, like, you'll get lots of just local people who need art. Um, you also will get, like, businesses saying, like, I want a mural. Can you, which I've, do- I've never painted one, but I've quoted, like, several businesses. And um, that's, m- murals are hard because I think, like, people don't know, like, how much how many hours go into it they don't know the cost but a lot of businesses want them and mm-hmm. so I, I feel like i've disappointed at least a few and said like <laughs> this would be the cost if you want this but we go over all these ideas and then they're like oh i can't and yeah but yeah but the business is there I was going to ask how you were, because you said you were finding commissions through it and uh, that makes sense. So that's how you were finding commissions through it is they'd Mm -hmm. see your work and then go, I have this, but could you paint this for it? Yep. Huh. Yeah. Because the messaging is built right in. (laughs) Yes. And art shows. You'll get like businesses saying, hey, I have this room. Do you want to do an art show? Um, I've had that happen a few times just from like posting my art on Marketplace. Wow. That's impressive. I love it. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that also, I meet someone like, that's been successfully using it. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, and it, it at least like opens up your opportunities and in, in like, even if you're not selling like your stuff at like what you wish you could, you're right. at least getting like a lot of support from the community. So. Yeah. And the amount of views yeah. it gets is actually kind of astounding uh, yeah. how, uh, yeah, the, it, like I said, the built-in audience is there. I mean, I just sell weird vintage crap on it but i've always wanted to try (laughs) selling my my art on it so uh that's interesting okay um yeah and uh so why did you decide to start the etsy store first of all well i never okay my friend actually just he basically explained to me like how he sells prints on etsy and i just and it was a great method and i've never had someone like show me like here's how you make the listing here's how you do xyz and so like he showed me and then like three days later I started to make one. And okay. Um, so I, I also heard like, I've heard really good things about it from artists that I know um, in terms of like, I don't know. There was just a whole like Etsy thing where like no one was getting their payouts or something. Hmm. So like I'm starting after that. I don't know what that was, but <laughs> well, good. Um, <laughs> so hopefully I won't have to worry about that, but um I guess it just, it's consistent or can be yeah. more so than like marketplace. You can charge what's competitive. So, yeah. And are you, are you, uh, before you had said you were advertising when you were doing marketplace, which I assume is you were boosting the, the listings that you were putting up, correct? Or were you actually going into the business manager and doing advertising? So I, I only boosted things occasionally. Okay. Um, and that is helpful, but what I typically did. So I would just create like a listing on marketplace. And Mm -hmm. then I was like a member of like Dane County buy and sell, Uh, you know, like all these little groups that had hundreds of thousands of members that are just in Madison. I tried posting them on like, I'd be like Denver, Colorado page or like Miami, Florida, but then you get spammed by bots trying to like get your phone number. Right. And so I stopped doing that. Oh, um, th- I'm so glad that that's gone away. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interject, but just as someone yeah. who uses Facebook marketplace on a daily basis, the person who goes, is this available? Yes, it is. Text me your address so I can know that you're a real person. And it's like, Oh yes. my God, every like, can day. Can I pick it up now? <laughs> like just, they all say the same things. All the, all the bots. Yeah. yeah. And it's, and it took me a while to go like, what are they trying to do? And then I was like, oh, because they're putting in your phone number and want you to send them the approval code so then they can take over your account. And yeah. yeah. And that, it took me a while to figure it, cause I used to mess with them. I used to, uh, one of the things I used to try to do, and this has nothing to do with anything. It's just a fun story. <laughs> um, but I messaged one and they were like, text me your address so I can know that you're a real person. And I'm like, okay, what's your address? So I can send you a certified mail to know that you're a real person asking me for this address. And they're like, just text me the address. <laughs> and I'm like, but I need your address so I can have you sign for it when this package arrives so that I know that you're real. And like, I would just go back and forth. And then I realized more and more, I'm like, oh, I'm messing with somebody that's a hacker. I probably shouldn't really get them mad. I should just ignore them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? it's, it's hard not to. I've, I've done similar things. Yeah. Like, yeah. But... And- 
well, like at first too, like some of them will just say like, send me your address. That's all they say. And so I was like creeped out. Like what? Like are mm-hmm. people trying to come to me, but they're not, they're just trying to hack you. So. Yeah. Yeah. They're trying to get, they're trying to take over your Facebook account. Yeah. Uh, Cause they need the approval code. I've, I've come, I came really close the first time that happened to almost or doing something. I'm like, should I, the per- their profile says that they're just some, you know, friendly little old grandmother. And, you know, but they're not. They're, yeah. they're a grandmother whose account got hacked and it's been taken over by this person. Um, yeah. Anyway, okay, back to making art. Um, <laughs> so you were promoting that way. And then now when you did the Etsy store, how are you promoting the Etsy store? Um, well, there's there's an option on there. Like if you have a, sh- a shop, you can like pay Etsy like a dollar a day to like, gotcha. you know, advertise your stuff. Or um, I just like share my stuff on Facebook and Instagram so yeah. far. Um, I'm going to have a TikTok. People keep telling me I should do that. So I only just did it recently that. myself. I know it's it's weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> yeah. I just don't want to get addicted to TikTok. I I just don't want to you know start scrolling. I right. don't think I will, but it's just so addictive. It's like it's yeah, crazy. <laughs> no, I uh-huh. agree. <laughs> No, but, it, just in the past few weeks, I, I did it. And it's, yeah, I just feel like I'm doing it wrong. That's the main thing. I get on there and I'm like, everybody's already so far ahead of me. I don't know what this is, what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. But Some of them, I, mean, I think it's just so accessible for artists though. Like I'll, I'll look at the format that they're using and they're just showing like little like clips of like, here's my paint palette. Here's like the zoomed in shot of like me painting the canvas. It's like, it's all very doable stuff if mm-hmm. you are an artist. But it's like it's intimidating because there are the ones on there that have like a million views like consistently and they're like they have so many sales and it, it's just hard to compare yourself to that. Yeah. But. Well, and this is the thing about it that I like, but also hate because it frustrates me is if I need to edit something in a long format, I can really do it the way that I want. And I'm, I'm, I'm okay with working that format. I love the short format and I'm jealous of people that are good at it because I am not. <laughs> and I want to be because I really like the short format. Uh, I'm a fast yeah. talker and I have, uh, my attention span goes from place to place minutes after minutes, you know, and, and uh-huh. so I want to conquer this short format, but I just feel when I do it, I don't get the point across and everything I do looks like nonsense. Um, use templates? Um, I have, and I don't like them. I could, I have yet yeah. to find a template that I like. You know, yeah. they, they just look, when I use the template, it's like, oh, I look like somebody who just discovered the platform and used the template and said, that's good enough. But yeah. they're, they're much better than that. And I've seen, pe- or there are people that probably use them that I don't even realize they're using a template. But when I use it, 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 it literally looks like I still have my training wheels on to me uh, if I yeah. use a template. I don't know why. It's yeah. my own hang up on it, I suppose. And maybe it's just because I know that I'm using a template. So I feel like I'm failing because I'm using a crutch. I don't know. Yeah. And you're like, this isn't my idea. This is somebody <laughs> Exactly. Else. That's exactly yeah. what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. Um, but one thing I have discovered, which is weird. And just here's the thing for me using it in the week. The stuff that gets better views are things when I use their built in effects. Like if I use something, it's like, yes, I made the video. But then I go, mm-hmm. oh, put this flashy thing that happens on it. Um, those yeah. get better views for some reason. I don't know why that is. I didn't do anything different, but add a little afterthought on top of it. Yeah. It's the strangest thing. Maybe anyway. it's the color. Like it's just really eye catching sometimes. Yeah. So like, I don't know. A lot of the audiences are younger too. So like maybe they push that more. I don't know. That's what's weird is a lot of the people that I see that use it when I'm on there, they aren't. <laughs> I don't yeah. see a lot of young people on it. It's yeah. kind of strange. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. so on your Etsy store, sorry, we went off on <laughs> using TikTok for a brief second there. Um, on your Etsy store, now you're doing the prints. Is this a print on demand or do you have prints you're doing yourself? Like, how are you creating these prints? So I'm going, um, with a company in Colorado that just does a really good job. So okay. they're creating them for me and then I'm having them, um, made, I'm having like tests run and then getting them shipped to the, the buyer. Okay. So, um, And that way I can also like design them online. I can add frames and like, you know, see what sizes are going to work and not work. Um, And then I photograph all my own art. So uh, I'm able to do things pretty much all on my own, um, which is really nice. Like uh, when I talked to my friend about it, he was saying like, um, 
his name is Theo. I don't know if you've heard of Theo Howard. He's he does okay. stuff locally in Madison. Um, but he um, he said that like the deterrent for like artists being able to generate income isn't always like a lack of like it's a lack of being able to do all the labor in a lot of cases like to sit there and to make you know a hundred prints or like to put all these resources into that all these things it's not always possible mm -hmm. for a lot of people and it can feel like you're chasing the stream that's like maybe gonna screw you over and you yeah. don't want to do that so you it's being able to like work with a company and make things you know it's like it's just easier it's it's a lot better yeah so. Okay. And quality is pretty, pretty good too. So. And when did you start showing your work publicly? When did you actually start putting your work out there? Um, about five years ago, I had a show. So I, I showed work at quality CBD on Willie street. I've I actually met a lot of people that have worked there or uh, shown yeah. work there. Yeah. 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 A lot of people in Madison. And then my first show show was at, um, mother fools and it sold out like that was my first art show and i showed up at the end of the month to pick up stuff and they were like it all sold and i, I was like wow that's oh, wow crazy. so when was that about uh 20 2018 oh wow 2018. okay oh, yeah. and how did you reach out to these places um I don't know. I would, I just kind of like bounced from place to place. Like quality CBD told me about mother fools. And then I learned about, um, I did shows at like fair trade on state espresso Royale. I have another one coming up at, at fair trade in like a week. I have to hang stuff up in a week. Okay. Yeah. So, I go there all the, that's the coffee shop I like to go to. So yeah. I like, I like the beans they use. <laughs> it's a good, it's a good place. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And they, they haven't, no, they do. Sometimes when they don't have or when they're in between works and there'll be a few days before they have stuff hung on the walls, it looks like they were robbed just because they've got like the little things that the things hang from. <laughs> it just looks oh, like that's so what they, uh, they even told me they're like, hey, we're going to have our walls bare for like days. Like, can you do it a day earlier? And I was like, <laughs> I have to work. I can't. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah, but, it's it's really yeah. funny to walk in there. It it totally uh the aesthetic of the place really you walk in and you're like something's not right in here <laughs> yeah they know it looks bad they're like yeah uh, but i do like that place that's nice uh, i i i actually met uh, when i first started this show back in 2017 uh one of the first artists that i met was because their work was hanging in there when i went to go get coffee and i contacted them so hmm. that was yeah it was uh, a guy named phil um nice so over the years, you, and, and this isn't even really over the years, you said you started putting your stuff out there in 2018. Uh, what have you learned since you started doing that? Like, what are some of the things, I guess, what have you learned or what are some things where you're like, oh, I wish I would have known this or I've learned this because I've done it now? Like, are there things that you've discovered after putting your work out there publicly? Yeah, a lot. I, like, yeah? I think when you're first starting out, like, you'll kind of like, reply to anything like you're kind of like you're like the pick me artist and you're, like all opportunities seem like really good ones oh yeah um and there is some truth in that but i think there's some some you know people will want to they won't they won't want to pay you enough or you'll be set behind by doing certain events or like um certain fairs if you do them a certain way it's like and I think a huge thing I've learned is like, you don't have to compare yourself to like the people who, you know, are able to afford the booth at the fair on the square. Like if you don't, if you can't do that, there's still all these other opportunities that you can do mm -hmm. and you'll still be able to find like other creative people and have, you know, positive creative experiences. You don't have to have like all of the things right away. It's really a, a very slow process. I think, um, and I think a lot of creative people look at like TikTok and like these overnight situations that actually don't really happen. Yeah. Um, so I think it's really important to be proud of yourself for like just the, the little things you're doing mm -hmm. and each thing. And yeah, I think that's, that's really important. And how many events do you do a year? Um, well, 
currently I, I only thought I was going to do one this year. Okay. Like, I, I wanted to only build myself up online and not do in-person stuff. Um, but then they contacted me and they're like, do you want to do this thing this summer? So right. I, I think last year I did maybe like four or five, hmm. um, which was a lot for me. So I, I also work full time. Like I have a day job. So okay. I, I just can't always like, I wish I could put, um, you know, all my time into art stuff, but yeah, can't, can't yet. So, okay. Now yeah. with the saying, building your stuff online, what are some things that you're like, what are some goals you're doing to achieve that as far as building yourself online? Cause I personally am the same sort of way. It's like, I used yeah. to do markets, but then just things happened and I couldn't do them anymore. And, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm just really full on going online. Like what are, what are some of your goals and things that you're, you know, planning as far as how to achieve that? I think learning to drive more traffic to my Etsy, which like, it's honestly, it's not as difficult as it, it seems. It shows you okay. consistently um, where your traffic is coming from. It shows you like, I guess it gives you things to follow. Um, so I guess learning more of, of driving traffic and then also um, like, I don't know, sharing the right things on social media, just getting more consistent views. Um, and making a TikTok, I guess that's another thing I need to do. Um, Here, oh, here's the one thing I realized too when I went to go make the TikTok. You can't link to anything until you get a certain amount of subscribers. Oh, really? That's, yes. That oh. was the drawback I had. So now I'm just at the, well, I got to get people to follow me mode. Like you can add yeah. basically a link to, say, if you have a YouTube or an Instagram, you can add that into your profile and it's not even that clear when you go there. But yeah, I was mm. thinking I was going to be able to do like Instagram stories where I can actually put a link button in there. Nope. Mm. Can't do wow. it yet. You have to have a thousand wow. subscribers. Well, maybe I will focus more on, for now, I guess, Instagram reels. That's a that's a pretty good way to get views at least. But yeah. I think like, a lot of people tell me like, oh, you should, you should make a TikTok. Like, but I think that they're not, they're not necessarily like creating and trying to sell art, but they see that they see the TikTok views. And so right. they want you to have that. And they're like, this is possible, but it, it might, you know, I don't know how much influence I want that to have over me. It's kind of something I've also learned. Like, yeah. That's another thing you learn over time is like, here's what, like, you get so much advice as an artist. You get advice from people who have no, like, they've never worked in your field. They don't know anything about art or selling it, or they've never tried. But but they're trying to help you. So yeah. They give you no, all it, it's all advice. yeah. It's all really meant in you know help out help out. I, all yes. of a sudden, I can't think of the word. You know what I mean? It's meant helpful. to be helpful. Yes. yes. <laughs> Jeez. Yes. <laughs> but like, I've got. I've had that happen. Like you know, my whole life and. And it's, it's kind of funny because sometimes like, you know, you get to certain points and then you can gauge like what, it, what boundaries you have to set, you know, when people tell you like what to do, you know, you know what you actually need and it's, it's, it's interesting. I yeah. 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 And, but I will say the, yeah, the views and stuff are there. And if I get the ability to actually put a link on stuff, it will be helpful and I'll already have all these people, but it's the same sort of thing. Yeah. It's. I, I couldn't believe that when I first got there, I was like, I can't do that. Oh, you know, yeah. but I get it too, because then everybody would do it and it would just be link city. You know, it, it that's yeah. all people would do. So I get it. But at the same time, it was frustrating that I didn't learn until I already set up the account. <laughs> yeah. And then you have to do the views and I, I don't know. I don't know anything about TikTok. Like, it's not that much different. It's just so fast. It's, it's, yeah. it's really fast. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, no, but that's interesting. And I, I and then you're, uh, have you heard of the analytic tool? Oh, it starts with B something or other for Etsy. Like there's this particular company. I, I shouldn't have brought it up if I don't know the full name. I want to say beehive, but that's wrong. It's just where my mind goes. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, okay. Cause you were saying you were using the analytics and I'm very yeah. much an analytics guy. I, every yeah. platform I use, I, first thing I do is I connect the analytics to whatever I'm supposed to connect it to as far as researching the business side of it. And there's mm -hmm. for Etsy, they have a very good analytical tool inside of theirs, but they have another one that shows like where the traffic's coming from third party sites, who's selling what comparison, yes. all that kind of, of stuff. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. Um, so I, I just wanted to see if you were using that, but I couldn't remember the name. So good job, Tom. I, I think I'm using it. Like, <laughs> okay. Whatever the tab is on Etsy, that's the analy- It's probably the same thing. Okay. But, um, yeah, it's helpful. It tells you like what people search and then when your art comes up and then how it's placed in the Etsy lineup. Mm-hmm. And it's weird because like on some things, it's like you're the third thing down when this was searched, like your painting was the third one. But then it's like in this one, you were number 500. And there's no rhyme or reason that I can find yet in that. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I also want to experiment with like, if you do pay more for advertising, does it actually make a difference? You know, I, I think that that could be helpful. I, but I don't think know. it does. Um, and you yeah. don't have to pay a lot. There are different strategies to go about it. And I'm going to say this not from my experience with Etsy, but my experience with eBay. When I use eBay, I recently had a person... Um, so I ha- I used their built-in advertising, which is just sponsored ads, which before you joined Etsy, that was a big thing. People didn't like that these sponsored ads were getting put in front of their stuff, basically giving people the chance to go, oh, I'd rather buy this instead, instead of the person's work. Uh, mm-hmm. Get that. Totally get it. Um, but its company needs to make money, although one would argue you pay enough to use it. Um, so yeah. <laughs> the... the um, the on eBay, they have a similar thing where you can do sponsored stuff. And I did it and I would just go, you know what? I'm going to pay just 1% of the sale to do this. Like they recommend like 15 to make it. And I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm just going to try it. So I did 1%. My sales started going up. I was like, well, holy cow. Hmm. And then I didn't really think about it. I just had automated ones going, you know what? Whenever I post a book, boost that sale automatically. Went through there 1%. It's still wasn't a huge difference, but I was consistently selling what I was advertising. Now, my point being is I just kind of ran this and I was doing well. Somebody returned something to me and I got a strike on my account because they said it arrived damaged. You know, just one of those people, like there was no talking to them. It was the post office broke it, not me. Why are you flagging my account? Whatever. Uh, Big deal. Stuff happens. You know, I got over it. Uh, But problem was, is because of this, eBay said, well, your account has, somebody's complained about it, so we're going to be turning off your advertising until we can re-review your account again. My advertising went off. Mm -hmm. Guess what? My sales went down. Like, I didn't realize how much of a difference it was making. So not that this would influence what you're doing, but I'm saying I didn't realize that these little 1% ads that I was doing was actually making a difference. So, I don't know. Yeah. That's possibly. (laughs) It's my my long answer. (laughs) Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. so yeah, I mean, it's worth considering. Yeah. I don't mind it. I don't know. I haven't looked much into it, but I think that, I think that I'll try to like up that. See, I also have heard, I don't know if you've heard this, but um, I've heard from a lot of people that Etsy takes about a month. Like after you make an Etsy, you can't really expect sales. Like your views are going to increase up until that month point kind of, and then you'll, it'll be like set, like your Etsy's set somehow and, the, and then you can start making sales after a month's passed i don't know if that's true oh um i'm not like, sure either i I, I opened an etsy account a long time ago and i really have kind of moved off of it i yeah. haven't really used it so i can't remember yeah hmm yeah okay I don't know. <laughs> well there we go <laughs> yeah. yeah i wish i also like marketplace is it's fun it's so weird you get so many like conversations start with people too so i i wish i could use marketplace yeah. more but now i'm like i'm trying to charge more money for my art and so i don't know if i've like you know now my audience is used to this if they see if they see this i don't know if it's even if i can do that so yeah. i'm hoping etsy works because i don't know well and that's the thing too when i've recommended marketplace to other people to try and use it there's the one factor that some people don't want. And you were just saying you like that people can contact you and ask you about it. And that really is messenger is built directly into it. And people can go, Hey, can I actually give you a hundred for this instead of 120 or Hey, is this, this size? Like people can message you and you can, I mean, you don't have to respond to them, but you can. And when you do, you can start a conversation and do more stuff or they'll even go like, do you have more? And it'll be like, yes. And send them a link to more that they could buy. That's similar. And yeah. you do a conversation. And to some people, they don't want that. You know, there are a lot of people like, oh, I don't want people contacting me. And I get that. Yeah. I understand that. Uh, but I enjoy that part. I meet lots of really interesting people <laughs> through <laughs> through yeah. Facebook Marketplace, <laughs> especially yeah. locally. And I have like a lot of people that like I still know and talk to and like sell art to that like I met on there. And it, it's 
it's a great it's a great way to, to meet people. I yeah. had one person that actually had to stop following me because they kept paying too or spending too much. <laughs> they were like, my husband's uh, getting very mad that I keep spending all this money, so I'm going to have to get off Facebook. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> a very oh, sweet person, really though. <laughs> I also think there's a formula to it when you make a marketplace listing. So, yeah. like, if you're shopping, like, you want to see a bunch of stuff, and then you want to pick what you want out of all the stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So if you make a listing that's, like, one painting, one photo, like, it's ten different paintings, one photo of each, then they're scrolling, and then they're deciding which one they want. And so they're also seeing more of your work that way. Yeah. Um, so like, and then you can put in the comments, like number one is this, uh, it's this size, this is what it's about, or this is, if you want to add dialogue, you can do that. But I think that those are the most successful ads that I had. Okay. Were like ones with a bunch. Yeah. I discovered a new thing recently too. Um, and they don't seem to mind it cause I've been doing it for so long, but I've created groups for, uh, items that I sell a lot. So I create my own buy and sell group. And in the description of the marketplace listing, I put a link to that Facebook group and people will go join it. And I set that Facebook group, the buy and sell to only let the admin post. Nobody who joins can post. So really what I do is every time I post something that's in that's related to that group on marketplace, I share it to that marketplace group. So everybody that's a member of that group, they just get, because have you ever noticed when people post to a group, those are always the first things you see when you sign into Facebook? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I created a Facebook group. So like I have one for vintage children's books because I have a lot of people that buy vintage children's books for me. So whenever I do a marketplace posting in the description, I put a link, I go, do you want to join my, or see all of more, see all of more of these, see more of these. Whenever I post new ones, join my Facebook group. And I put a link to that group. People join it. Then I add it to that group when I post it and all those people, it will show up on their timeline that I have a new book posted. And wow. I've been doing that. And that's my little way of advertising on there. I've got like a couple hundred people in one of my groups. So that's awesome. Yeah. It's a neat little, it's a neat little trick. I learned that from another person that posts on Facebook marketplace. So hmm. there you go. Little tip for you. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. And I bet like with vintage stuff, I bet that's really, really successful. That's hit especially. or miss. <laughs> it's vintage stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool stuff. Yeah. Um, and then uh, before we leave today, is there uh, anything else you'd like to mention to people that uh, some of you have come up project you're working on that you'd like to mention uh, that people can expect from you? Yes. Um, I'm doing an art show at fair trade and it'll be up all summer from uh, like June 3rd until the end of August. So okay. that will have a lot of different types of work. I think I'm going to have around 20 paintings that are originals there. And then I'm going to have some prints as well. So, okay. And that's Fair Trade on yeah. State Street, downtown Madison. I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. I'm so glad that we got this chance to meet. Yeah, thank you for having me on.